Do you ever think to yourself, man, if only I had started tennis when I was really, really little and my family had tons of money and they could afford to send me away to academies and get top level coaching and play all those tournaments and travel, then I really would have had a shot. Then maybe I could have been a professional tennis player. I used to have those thoughts when I was in high school and it wasn't until after college when I started getting a little bit more perspective from players that were trying to go pro and I started to realize exactly how hard it is. And a video that I saw just recently is a, a perfect example of that, and I wanted to share it with you. It's called Road to One ATP Points. Rankings are based on points in the WTA and the ATP, and the Tennis Brothers is an amazing tennis channel, and this video was just up uploaded a couple days ago, and it's perfect insight into what it takes to try to make it and even just start to make it. And so let's watch this video together. And for me, it's if you're a tennis fan, it's critical that you know how hard these girls and guys are working. Let's check this out together. Ever since I started playing tennis at the age of seven, I had the dream to become a professional tennis player and make a living out of tennis. Today, I take the first step towards that goal as I start a one year mission to get my first ATP point. Every Sunday for the rest of the year, I'm gonna be documenting my journey and sharing it with you guys as I train, learn, and compete to gain my first professional point. It will definitely not be easy as there are only around 2,200 people with at least one point in the whole world. So that's ridiculous. 2,200 people in the whole, what is there, 8 billion people on planet Earth? About 2,000 people on the ATP side, the men's side, have a point. And to be a top player, I mean, how many, here, let's look it up, ATP rankings. 11,000 points. Novak Djokovic has 11,000 points. And it falls off, you know, pretty, pretty quickly uh, after that. Uh, but still, thousands and thousands of points to be in the uh, top 10. Let's see what the top 100 player has. Uh, was that points? 20? No, no, no. Points is this column. 737 to be in the top 100. And by the way, you're about breaking even around 100 in the world. 75 to 100 is about the break even point. You're not even profitably playing tennis professionally until you're well inside the top 100 and you need 737 of these points in order to make it up to that level. I'm going to make it my mission to get that point. But first, how do you get an ATP point and how am I going to get there? Essentially, you have to win your round of 32 match at what's called a futures tournament. There are two levels of events, $15,000 events and $25,000 events. To get into these, I'll have to go through qualifying as I don't have any sort of ranking at the moment. This will usually be either two or three rounds at least just to get into the main draw. So you, you have to basically win a mini tournament just to get into the tournament and then win the first round of that, uh, that qualifier tournament. I'm sorry, the, uh, the challenger tournament or the futures tournament. Is to start playing British tour events, basically men's nationals tournaments, to get some match practice and then in around April to try my luck on the futures tour. And the journey begins now, where I'm going to show you what I do in a day on my road to pro. It's so early. I don't remember how old uh, Felix is. I, I think he's 16 or 17. And and did you catch what he said? He's already competing at a national level in the UK. And that's just kind of like the stepping stone at, at his age. So at as a teenager, as like middle teens, he's already competing at a national level. Uh, I get asked constantly in the in the comments on uh, YouTube. Oh, Ian, I'm XYZ age. I live in X, uh, ABC country. Can I st can I go pro? And the th the the reality is, if you're not already nationally competitive as a teenager, uh, then you you're just not you're just not even close. So if you haven't even started playing tournaments, you know yet, go play tournaments. 
as soon as possible so that you find out like wh where are you compared to the other people your age, wherever it is that you, you live. And once you start to win tournaments and do better, maybe you'll get a, here in the US, like a state rate ranking, then maybe a regional ranking, then maybe a national ranking. And once you get to the point where you're like very competitive on the national level, maybe then you can consider trying to make it at very you know low level kind of entry level professional but for, for at his age to be even thinking about that is incredible the annoying thing is i can't even have any of my coffee it's so hot i literally almost burnt myself that's hot it is absolutely freezing outside it's like negative two degrees that's not that cold felix Come to Wisconsin, I'll show you some cold. So it's currently 6.15, we got here 15 minutes before the start of our session. So while watching this, like, I, I just ask yourself, how many days, like, have you ever had a day um, just working on your tennis where you put in this much work that he's putting in on this, this one day? So 6.15, first session. I'm playing with my friend James. We're gonna be playing for about an hour, and then we're gonna hit the gym. Had a boy, even young uh, whippersnapper doing the the warm up. I love it. Taking good care of the body. How many of us do this? How many of us? Do, how many of us do short court and you know, warm up the body ahead of time? And after we'd done a proper match warm up for around 25 minutes, we moved on to warming up our serves to get ready for some points to finish the session. This is basically just the start of the day off. You know, get in your reps, get some rhythm, get some timing, get a little bit of point play in. And so uh, this would be obviously like the main training session for most of us, you know, normal tennis players. And, and Felix is viewing this as just kind of like the get the get the day started, you know, kind of warm up session. So that's tennis session one of the day done, and now it's on to the gym. Today I'm working on lower body strength and some power work. I'll talk in more detail in future videos about specifically what I'm doing in my strength and conditioning program, but for now, enjoy this gym montage. So now after his on-court training session, he's in the gym doing another training session. Again, like, I, don't, I don't know about you, but even when I was in college, uh, to do either one of those things it was like, a work day, right? You go on court and do a training session or go to the gym and do a training session. Even in college, you know, D2, whatever, top 30, you know, ranked uh, D2 school, wasn't really often that I was on the court and then would also go in the gym. Sometimes I would. Oh, oh my God, I'm dead. All right, gym session done. Let's go get some food. But first, I decided to have a cold shower. These helped me to wake up and feel energized for the rest of the day, especially because I had to wake up so early. So my snack Hardcore. after a workout consisted of a protein bar, a chicken and rice bowl, and a electrolyte drink. So at the moment, my aim is to build muscles so I can get stronger and hit the ball harder. This means I have to eat more calories than I burn. I'll try to do this by eating healthy foods throughout the day to help fuel me up for my sessions. And I'll talk more about nutrition and specific- That's underrated, by the way. At his age, his metabolism, working as hard as he is, to, I, I, he's got to be consuming a ton of calories to have any chance at all of putting on uh, some muscle and some mass. I, just the, the fact, just eating enough to like keep up with his activity level is, is a lot of work. Typically what I eat as a tennis player later on in future videos. But now, back to my day. When I got home, I made lunch and then got to work. This is where I'll plan for upcoming and current videos like the one you're watching right now. 
So just to show you guys how long editing actually takes, I'm going to be editing this video for one whole hour and I'm going to check back up in one hour to see how far I've got. Editing hustle. So after one whole hour, I've done 45 seconds of the video. Now that doesn't include any of the music, sound, any of the color grading, overlay, so you guys can tell these videos are taking a long time. So if you are enjoying these videos, make sure to smash the like button. And before you know it, it was time to leave for my second tennis session of the day. I had a quick apple as a pre-workout meal in the car, and when we got there, I made sure to do a full physical warm-up. Usually, I like to do about 5-10 to 10 minutes of spinning on the bike just to get my legs loose, and then a full range of dynamic stretches and strengthening exercises which me, my physio and my SNC coach put together to help make sure I can play best on the court. So this is gym workout number two, and did you catch that? It was put together by a strength and conditioning coach, so he's following a a program specifically to, to challenge him, to build his strength, to build his endurance, build his stamina, so on and so forth. The response today? Still to decide whether it's going on the left or the right hand. I've got it. I'm going to put it on my right. So now 4.30 in the afternoon, he's going back out on the court again. In today's tennis session, we warmed up by just hitting through the middle, trying to find some good depth and some good rhythm. We then moved on to a drill where you have to feed cross, hit a high ball line, and then the points open, basically working on the defensive positioning and how well you can neutralize in the defensive position. We then also did that on the backhand side. Then finished your session with some points. We played a short set to four. Patterns, directional control, then serve return point play. At the end of the session, we had a fun game of Super Bluff. We basically played touch between all four of us. This is a great way just to end the session and have a bit of fun to finish. After the session was done, I like to do some recovery. Usually I'll do some foam rolling, some static stretching, or even have an ice bath if I'm feeling particularly sore or know I have a big event the next day. After that, it's time for dinner. Today I have potatoes, salmon, peas, and some kale. It's got protein, it's got carbs, and it's got vegetables. A great meal to end the day. And I try and aim to go to bed by about 10 o'clock. I would also love it if you guys join this journey over the year and subscribe to the channel. Like I said, I'll be posting weekly Road to One content every Sunday at 2 p.m. So you should you should subscribe. I mean, this content's amazing. And I just, I love the insight. Did, did you catch his schedule? I don't know. Felix, can you tell me in the comments, please? How many times per week are, are you following this kind of training regimen? Uh, he, he did three different body you know type of workouts um he did the training session after his first hit he did the warm-up and dynamic stretching before his second hit and then he did the cool down the the foam rolling and the stre stretching after his second hit so he's working on his body three times during the day and he's doing two different encore training sessions and i again for me personally like I, I just kind of naively when I was younger was like, oh man, I could have could have been so much. Maybe I could have been pro. When I watch players like Felix, who's a way better athlete than I, he's a way better athlete than I am. Not even close. When you know when I was his age, I was not even close to as coordinated or strong or, or fast. You know every the the whole package, and the fact that he's working this hard to try to have the, the chance to just win his first point. And then you, you uh, consider that the number 100 player in the world has 734 of those points. Like just 
the 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 effort and the consistency and the dedication and the drive is unbelievable. So Felix, I'm I'm rooting for you. I love that you're making content out of it, and I wanted to share it. Number one, because I think it's amazing, and everybody should know about it. But number two, I think it's critical that tennis fans understand exactly how much their favorite players have gone through to make it on the tour. Hopefully this gives you some perspective. If you enjoyed it, do me a favor, click the like button. Go subscribe to the Tennis Brothers channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.